such a good doggy buoy you are a really good doggy and action <laughs> right okay you can go now oh much much better at getting off than getting on um buoy's turned into a little oh was my microphone not working ah well you're just banging against oh sorry sorry like sorry Making a making a right old racket. <laughs> I quite like the noise that makes. Around. Actually, makes uh, it seem real. Yeah, right. Old Bowie's come and sat back down on her blanket. I was just going to say, she's a bit of an old lady now. How old is she? She's nine, nine, nine. and a half, and she can't jump up on the chair anymore. Mind you, the chair's pretty high. To be fair. Yes, um, <laughs> so I'm having trouble with you. You have chair just too. as much trouble. Um, as she does. So I have to lift her up and put her on the chair, but she can jump down anyway. I digress. Hello everyone and welcome. I hope everyone's well. Sorry about my jingly jangly glasses. Um, we are here to make hot water bottle covers. It's very serious. I know that um, some of you are living in warmer climes and we're very jealous. Well, I am anyway. Um, it was really, really frosty this morning. So all of the trees were like covered in icy. I quite like that. It's quite pretty. Um, but it's blimming cold so hot water bottle is what we need methinks so this is a way of you felting your own hot water bottle cover and then putting the hot water bottle inside it and i'll explain how to do that here's one i prepared earlier so this has actually got the hot water bottle inside um and as you can see it's a rather splendid fit oh my watch is telling me my heart rate's high <sighs> <laughs> that's because we're on live telly um yeah it's quite a good fit so you the, the thing with this kit if you're making our kit or if you're doing your own thing is that you need to make sure that you don't shrink it too much when you're felting it and you can still get the hot water bottle inside so this particular kit's called hotty Botty, and i know some of you got this for christmas and uh, our kit, I mean, and we're very excited to make it and we're very pleased I was doing this today. So that's good. So if you uh, want to get yourself one of these, it does come with everything you need. I'm just going to show you what's inside it. So let's just tip everything out all over the table. OK, so what you get in the packet is you get the very important template. Now, interestingly, or not <laughs> I think it's interesting is that the hot water bottle the felt will shrink when you're felting it and when you're making it okay so the template starts off about 15 to 20 percent bigger than your hot water bottle cover will end up so that's very important so that's pre-cut for you um I, I, I would suggest getting a hot water bottle first or using one that you've got and just checking this is going to work checking that your hot water bottle isn't too big you might need to buy a different one in order to get it in this size i think it's pretty standard the one i used um probably small size it's not massive but anyway um just check that first so this is your hot water bottle template that comes in your kit then you get all manner of gorgeous wool tops for the felting of said water bottle cover then you also get a bamboo mat and a piece of netting okay which you will need to do the felting with and very importantly a set of instructions so these go through step by step exactly what you need to do okay 
So that's everything you're going to need. So I've got one here that I've been working on, but I wanted, what I wanted to do is just move that out of the way and start again from scratch to show you exactly what you start off by doing before you get into the fun bit with all the colours, because you need to make the inside. So the hot water bottle cover is made of two layers. So I don't know if you can see, maybe just switch the overhead a sec, Chris, if you may. So if you can see the inside layer here is white, okay? And then there's actually another little bit of white that I've laid on as a sort of second layer. And then I start to lay out all of the design on the top. So the very first thing that we do is we start off with the white wool tops and that comes sort of organized for you in two separate pieces and then you have to split it in half and use one side for one and one side for the other okay so the first thing that you need to do is make sure you've got everything you're going to need you're going to need your bamboo mat and your nesting which has come in your kit but you're also one thing that doesn't come in the kit is some washing up liquid mixed with lukewarm water this is called liquid detergent, I believe, in the US. So you need about a dessert sp tablespoonful of that in the bottom, not too much, don't go too crazy. Fill that up and that's your sort of basic felting solution that you're going to need when you're making your felt. Then I've also just got a little block of soap. Mine's lovely olive oil soap, but it doesn't matter. It can be the cheapest soap from the supermarket, really doesn't matter. Then you're also just going to need a dishcloth and you're going to need a towel or a tea towel to just sort of mop up and dry your hands, okay? So one of the most important things is how you pull the wool tops apart when you do any sort of wet felting. And this, I always try and um, emphasize to my students when they come for a workshop with me, is one of the most important thing, if not the most important thing, when you're doing wet felting. If you get this wrong, it's kind of make or break, really. If you get this wrong, it can all go to pot a bit. Most of the time it will felt together, but you'll just end up with something that's lumpy and bumpy and far more difficult to actually felt together and get a nice, flat, even piece of felt, okay? So wool tops is unspun wool, it's come directly off the sheep and then it's washed and brushed, carded, wound into a continuous length known as wool tops. Okay, and this is what we use to make felt with. And this is all merino wool tops, which felts the fastest because it's nice and fine. So short of using cashmere, this is a perfecto. And it comes in, we have it in over 70 different colors as well. So your kit's got lots of colors in it. And if you're doing your own thing and you've gone off piste and you're cutting your own template and doing your own thing, there's lots of colors to choose from. So what you need to do start off by getting your white ready for the inside of your hot water bottle and do ask questions as we go along here but if i miss something out but i just wanted to explain the rough process so you're putting something against the template as which will become the inside of your hot water bottle and then you're working to the outside of it and it's completely seamless okay so when we take the template out at the end you're left with what was around the template, which is your wool, which will have become felted and started to shrink a bit. So by the time you take the template out, you'll have your hot water bottle more or less, and you'll just be doing the finishing touches. All right, enough chatting. So this is the most important thing that I'm talking about, how to pull this wool apart. If you've never seen me do this before, watch carefully. If you have seen me do this before, yeah, you know, you can just like, you know, have a sip of tea. Uh, <laughs> what you need to do is hold it about six to eight inches down with the hand you don't write with and then the hand you do write with is the one that's pulling off the very ends of the fibers and this is really important that you don't pull off too much so the amount that you're pulling off i'm doing slow motion here is should be very very wispy okay wispy 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 that's my key word and what you're doing here is you're kind of separating out these fibers, which are then all going to then mingle and knit back together again and form a felt fabric. But you need to make sure they're not in a clump. What not to do would be to pull off a great big chunk like that, okay, because that's too much. And you would then separate that out into these wispy bits that I'm talking about. So Chris, if you can go to the overhead shot for me, please, darling. Thank you. Mm, which way am I going for Instagram right here? Okay, so. This is our basic template. Let me just turn it over so it's not curling up at the edges. I'm going to go horizontally to start with. Let me just move that out of the way a bit. Horizontally to start with, okay? And I'm just going to be pulling the fibers and laying them down over one another, okay? And just layering it up as I go. 
and just that's the bit I pulled off actually can you see that massive bit I pulled off see how many times I've managed to separate that out okay so now let me just take my big piece back again here okay so just going through it again so we're holding it about six to eight inches down here and then the hand you that you normally write with is the hand that you would just I use that paddy bit at the base of my thumb okay and then my fingertips to just grab the very end and release the fibers oh look at that oh check out your close-up there Christopher oh my heaven you've been busy this week with your close-up <laughs> <laughs> no comment well that's rather splendid isn't it look at that I can go a lot closer than can that can you what you can see is that I haven't done my nails this week. I do apologise for that. I was in a bit of a hurry this morning. All right, so just go to back to the other shot now, please, Christopher. Thank you. So what I want to show you now is that we are overlapping the fibres as we're laying them down, like so, until people always say to me, well, how do you know when you've got enough? Well, the answer to that is until you can pretty much no longer see the template here okay so you can see that I'm just building it up as I go and I'm pulling them off now this white uh, wool is very new and is the newer it is the fluffier it is you can see it's very fluffy um, so it's actually I'm just just noticing how fluffy it is the older the wool the less fluffy it becomes so when you get a wool top that's been lying around for a little while you will definitely notice a difference in the way that you're pulling it off. Okay, right, I'm just gonna speed up here. I'm gonna do speed felting, this is known as. <laughs> and just what I want to emphasize as well is that I'm laying all the fibers in the same direction here. So they're all going horizontally, okay. And then in a minute, when I get to the second layer, I'm going to be doing them vertically. Now, the reason for that is to make sure you get more of an even shrinkage okay so what you want is you want um these fibers are going to shrink this way and then ne the next layer i put on will go this way and they'll shrink that way and then overall you'll find that your your finished article will be more evenly shrunk that's the word evenly shrunk right so i'm just going to finish this off sorry is that a word shrunk yeah no shrunk oh sorry i thought you said shrunk <laughs> no be more evenly shrunk no definitely more evenly shrunk all right so that's probably enough and in fact it'll probably be determined by the amount of wool that you've been given in your kit as to when it's enough but what you need to realize is that it needs to be covered enough so that there aren't any gaps Okay, moving swiftly on. I'm just going to move this one out of the way a bit because I feel like I'm going to conjoin the two together. Uh, right, so the next thing, the soapy water, all right? So this is the little bit of washing up liquid, lukewarm water, basic felting solution. Then you're going to need your netting. Your netting in the kit is a bit smaller than this. I've got a giant piece here that I've been using. Um, I'm just going to pop that over the top, like so. Okay, if you want to go back to the overhead again, thank you. And then all you're going to do is you're going to take this and you're literally going to sprinkle it all over the top. Now, I know this is a bit tricky for some people because they're like scared of doing this, but you needn't be worried. It's absolutely fine. What you need to make sure is that you don't put too much on here at this point. Just go gently. But what I will say is it needs to be enough to completely wet it through. So what I'm going to do now is just use this dishcloth to press through the fibres and push that soapy um, solution through the fibres on one side just to show you the difference between the wet and the not wet. You can probably see these wet patches here and you can see these springy bits in, on, uh, in between the wet patches whereas this side where I've pushed the soapy water through all the fibres is nice and flat as a pancake. Okay and all of the air is out of it. Now this is really, really important. You need all of the air to be out, okay? So if you keep doing this and you've still got these puffy bits, it probably means you don't have enough water and you need to add a little bit more. So now I'm just going to do this side as well. And then what I'll do is I'll just add a tiny bit of the ordinary soap over the top. I'm just 
going to briefly give it a little rub to get it on its way and then we shall continue. So here's my ordinary soap. I'm literally just going to put a little bit of this over the top and then what I want you to see, if you can, because it's white on white, are the soap suds. Okay, so this is really important. You need to be able to write your name in the soap and see it for, the, for, for you to know that this is the right sort of consistency, as it were, and you've got a right, the right amount of soap, the right amount of water. What you don't want is you don't want puddles of water around the edge dripping on your lap. So you need to make sure that it's enough to get it completely wet down, but it's not forming puddles. And then what you're gonna do is you're just gonna rub this just for a couple of minutes. These are some bits here from the net actually that shouldn't be here. So ignore those. Those lovely pink bits are not part of the plan. Um, so you just want to rub this just for a couple of minutes, just to get it on its way. Rub all of the edges as well that you've got going around the edge of the template. So you can see there's my template, yes. And then these are the edges that I've gone, that I've overlapped the template. And these are the bits that are going to go round to the other side and essentially form the seam of the hot water bottle, okay? So it's a 3D seamless shape that we're making and there's no sewing required. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to carefully peel back the netting and we'll move on. So you can see that it's just covered the shape, okay? And it's, a, it's about the same thickness going all the way down and I've got this overlap going all the way out, around the outside. So now what I'll do is I'll just gently, carefully, but without panicking, pick it up <laughs> <laughs> and turn it over, all right? So like that, okay? So that's kind of what we're aiming for. And then the very first thing that you're going to do now is you're gonna bring all of these edges in. I'm gonna to come to these little corner bits here in a second, but bring all of your edges in. You don't have to get too sort of OCD about this. Just keep it as, as tight, as neat as you can to the edges. And what's important here is the actual shape of it. So don't worry about all this business here with all these little creases. They'll all come out uh, when you add the, add the subsequent layers and when you um, start rubbing it properly and, and really going for it. What I want to show you here is you can just tear the middle down here and bring them round just to make it slightly easier for you if it doesn't fit your shape very well. And if necessary, you can even use a little pair of scissors which I haven't got in front of me, so I'm just tearing it. Um, and just you could just like make a little cut there and a little cut there if you need to, just to, to help you. Uh, but the most important thing is that you keep this shape nice and tight against the edge so that you don't end up with a sort of Mohican around the edge. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to dry my hands because they're all wet and soapy. And now I need to use the dry wool tops again. So if you've got really wet hands and you're handling dry wool tops, it's not a good combo. So you do need to make sure you've dried your hands. Okay, now we do the same thing all over again on the other side, okay? I'm not going to do this completely, but I'm just going to sort of talk you through it and then I'm gonna move on. Because the whole process of making this is a lot longer than I've got now, because I've only got about half an hour. So. Back to the overhead again, please, Christopher. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing again. So I'm laying them down again in the same direction and I'm doing exactly the same thing all over again. So this next layer that I'm doing now, again, will get wrapped around before we move on to the next bit that I've already prepared ahead of me. So you would do exactly the same thing, use all the white wool going the same direction, yada, yada, yada. Uh, and and that's that. Back to me, please, Christopher. Thank you very much. So I'm now going to move on to the next bit. So imagine I've done that. Imagine I've just given that, I've wet that down and I've given that a little rub. Okay. Sorry, what have you done? What have I done? What do what? you mean? I've, uh, I've done the next layer. Oh, have you? Are you actually oh, okay. focusing on this? <laughs> I'm doing a lot of <laughs> things over here, for God's I'm sake. I'm just thinking... I'm gonna get home later and he'll have made me a hot water bottle cover. Anyway, no. okay, so you would do exactly the same thing. You lay out all the wool tops, you cover it with the net, you'd wet it down with the water, you put the soap on it and you give it a little rub for a minute or so. When you're doing that rubbing, that initial rubbing on those first two sides, don't go crazy. Don't think, oh, I know, I'm just gonna rub it a little bit longer because you know, I think that'll make it better. Don't do that because it will start to felt too much and then you won't be able to attach 
the next layer to it properly, which has got all your fabulous designs on it, and it'll separate. So it really is just a quick minute or so rub on the first two sides. Okay, so I'm just going to move that out of the way. I'm true blue Peter Styley. Here's one I prepared earlier. Ooh, a bit wibbly wobbly. Okay, so if we can go to the overhead again, please, Chris. Okay, am I in the right place for Instagram? I think I am. <clears throat> right, let me just bring this one alongside for those of you that are on YouTube. So the laying out of the design, let me just bring it up a bit actually. All right, so the next thing that I did, obviously I've gone a bit further here, but the next thing that I did was I got my white wool tops and then I laid out another layer, so no, no, I missed something out. The first thing I did was I folded the edges in again. So I've turned it over, I folded the edges in again. And then the next thing I did was I laid out another white layer using my white wool tops, but this time going vertically, vertically this way, all right? And as you can see, it's still got the overlap going around the edges, okay? And I just did that all over. Then the fun begins, because then you start to lay out your design, okay? And obviously you've got all of your lovely colours of wool tops here. Has anyone got any questions so far? Or am I going too fast, or am I going too slow, or what? I don't know. Right. Um, as far as <coughs> I can see, everybody is keeping up. Okay, all right. So the next thing that you do is you lay out these red stripes. And I want to talk to you just generally about how much wool you use for all of these designy bits, okay? Because it's really tempting to use too much. And what I want to emphasize is that you really need to use, very, again, very wispy amounts. So if I just pretend that I'm doing another stripe here, I want to show you how I, I go about laying that out. So I start off by separating, so I'm pulling the wool off in exactly the same way. I'm still pulling it off really, really wispily, okay? And laying it down in exactly the same way. And what I want to show you is, I don't know if you can see this on Instagram, now you've gone to the big one, so go back to the other shot, Chris. What I want to show you is how I would then build this up, all right? <laughs> Have close up, must use it. Right. <laughs> um, so I just want to show you how I build this up so it becomes opaque and it becomes a solid colour but it's not so it's not the same as me doing that okay that's what I want to explain so if you do that it won't attach to the white below it you need to give the fibres a chance to knit together and in order to do that you've got to be using these wispy bits when you're laying down the designs so that's how you would do that and again with these stripes here so you start off by doing this then you lay these stripes going this way and obviously with the designs it doesn't matter which way your wool is facing just follow the pattern or if you're doing your own thing it really doesn't matter the shrinkage has already been determined by those two white layers underneath and this is just the embellishment on top when you're doing your stripes again pull a bit off elongate it before you lay it down for these stripes and again if you find that they're not solid enough just build them up and put another piece on top the same with all of this okay so we've got various stripes going on here you do pink and you do mustard then you do some red stripes here with the scallops slightly trickier with the scallops pulling off a little bit of wool like this and you're just sort of teasing it into the shape you want it to be. It's almost like it's um, a circle actually. You could make little circles, but again, don't make them too thick because you'll really have trouble getting them to attach to what's underneath. And believe me, anyone will vouch for this when I, when I say this, that's, that's gone through this. If you make this too thick, it's so difficult to get it to attach when you're rubbing the design together. You just lose the plot because all, it, all that happens is this turns into a little felt ball and it falls off and it won't attach to what's underneath and you'll go mad. Right, so, so make sure that these are little wispy, sort of wispy circles with a flat top is how I've described them. And, or if you wanted to do circles, you could do circles and la then lay the green over the top to just turn them into a scallop. And then as far as these little uh, details are concerned, again, just using the tiniest, tiniest bits of wool tops. So again, with these little circles, anything that's a little circle or a spot can always be quite troublesome. So you do need to make sure that you aren't using too much wool. So I am just, bringing this round into a circle, but I'm making sure it's quite 
wispy and it's not sort of too compact okay and laying them down one by one like this and then you'll notice that in my design these have all then got a little polka dot in the middle and these have got a polka dot in the middle so let's just talk about tiny polka dots in the middle an even smaller bit you will need to just tear this apart slightly and, and if it's nice and wispy like this well I wouldn't recommend like turning it into a ball but just you know you can put it between your finger and thumb and just pull the end off like that and that's kind of what you want to be your polka dot okay I'm not going to do them all I'm just going to talk to you briefly about these petals as well so little petal shapes again pulling off tiny little bit like this and then what you can do is bring it round and then if you've got a bit left over bring it round again and what's fine to do is just twiddle it twiddle it oh, twiddle, twiddle it. it that's a technical ex expression that's a technical term twiddle you're just twiddling the end like that okay and then laying that down like this and if you want that to be more opaque you can just add another little bit on top of it again tear the wool tops never use scissors always just tear it because if you use scissors you're going to get hard lines that will shrink and that's how you're going to build it up very gradually and then again if you're just putting a little tiny tiny bit in the middle it's just a tiny tiny bit again use your finger and thumb if you want to just to get it into a, a bit more of a of the shape that you want but don't turn it into a like a little bird's eye pea okay keep it quite open open always open and wispy with all of these things and then what i'm going to show you is when we wet this down is the most important part because that's when you can adjust everything this this design i've created on this hot water bottle is fairly complex you, you don't have to do all of this if you don't want to but I think people are interested to know how to do all these little bits and bobs so I'm just explaining how to do them if you wanted to keep it more simple you can do obviously you don't have to do these flowers there's the little leaf I've just twiddled the end again and I'm just sticking that under there and again if you wanted to add some more details in with the other colors that you've got in the pack you can do but that's how you would go about doing these bits and bobs okay so what I want to show you now is how to adjust all of this stuff once you've wet it down because obviously you're dealing with dry wool tops when it gets wet and soapy it behaves very differently and i want to show you how that works okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to pop the netting back over the top and i'm going to show you how to adjust everything to get it exactly how you want it or near enough um, when you're rubbing it together okay so the netting goes over the top like so okay then i'm going to take the soapy water again I'm going to sprinkle it all over the top. I need a fair old bit. I'm probably going to run out actually because I didn't really have much in there. Then I'm going to use my dishcloth. So this is just any old dishcloth, J cloth, whatever you want to call it. And then when I'm doing this, I tend to start off and be quite careful in the direction that you're actually um, pushing this down. And I tend to go in the direction of the pattern a little bit. So that way is going that way. So I'll push it that way. And again, I want to get all of the air out of this so that I can really start to, uh, um, I'm going to use the word twiddle again. <laughs> I'm going to twiddle around with the, uh, like I'm going to readjust it. That's actually what I'm trying to say. Right, let me just get a bit more water here. So you can see the areas that are too dry, and now I really have run out. The areas that are too dry. Do you need me to make water for you, Julian? <laughs> Live on air, Christopher. Well, that would be a thing, wouldn't it? We'd probably get banned from... Anyway, let's not go there. I think we're fine, Christopher, but thanks for the offer. Okay, what I want to show everybody, it's a fine line, actually. It's a fine line between it being too dry and being too wet. And obviously I did this yesterday and it's kind of dried out overnight. So I'm now adding more to it. But what I want to show you is that there's no air left in that now. I don't know if you can see. Like if it, if it was still puffy, like it was around the edges a second ago, then I would need more. But what I am going to do now is I'm just going to add the bar of soap across it because it's really important that A, it's wet down sufficiently, but also that it's nice and soapy before you then attempt to remove 
the netting and readjust. So do just spend a couple of minutes just smoothing it all out, making sure it's nice and soapy because it will aid the removal of the net, okay? So We've you should got a be question, Gillian. Oh, yes, go on. The question yes. um, from uh, Facebook from Patricia yes. is... Uh, why do you use a dishcloth, Gillian? I am um, because it's impossible to spread the water through the fibres just using your hands. It's the best way to do it. So when you're initially pouring all of your soapy water on, you need to spread that evenly through all of the fibres. And the easiest way to do it is with a dishcloth. So if you were watching what I was just doing, you'll see how I just push it through, and it's perfect for that. So that just, makes total sense, Gillian. Good. If you go back to the overhead a sec, thanks. So just now peeling off my netting and you can see my design has stayed put which is perfect you can go back to the, that shot that's it i know you love that close up but you know it's time will come um what i want to show you here then i'm going to take this off because i just i just showed you how to lay that out didn't i don't need that one um what i want to show you now is how to adjust all of these patterns and designs to get them exactly where you want them. So you'll see the act of wetting this down has made everything go a bit sort of all over the place and skew with. Now I just use my fingers, but you could use a small pair of scissors if you want to. And you're just going to neaten everything up and tidying everything up. So this, this stripe's gone a bit wiggly woggly, so you just need to sort of get it back. Uh, 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 wiggly woggly. Wiggly woggly, that's another technical expression. Okay, I always remember when I was having my, uh, my wedding dress made, and I found this wonderful maker in um, Norfolk and uh, she made costumes and ballet dresses and stuff for the stage and and I just wanted some zhuzhing around the top of my dress and she just didn't know what I meant and my friend and I who'd gone to visit her knew what zhuzhing was um, you Maybe know? you need to um, uh, produce a glossary. A, a glossary of technical expressions yes. that I use. But yeah, like, who knows what zhuzhing is? Do you all know what zhuzhing is? Do you all know what zhuzhing is? I don't is? know. Yes, I know. I know. No, I don't. No, yeah. No. Well, well, I mean, I can explain, although it's, it's, uh, it's not really re relevant to what I'm doing here. So, so what I want to show you is that, you know, I'm, I'm just readjusting all these bits, okay? And I'm, I'm bringing them around like this okay and then you know those two shouldn't be touching each other so at this point what you can do is you can take things off so i'm just going to move that petal around there a bit more you can add more on so say for example i thought oh i need to have another little leaf in here i'm just going to add on let's just remove that just going to add another little leaf i'm just going to stick it under there like that and you can kind of press it down into the wetness and it will kind of show you what it would look like then i'm just looking at the top of these scallops and thinking well that's not ideal so i'm just going to get some more of the um, citrus green I'm just going to elongate that slightly I'm just going to lay that on top like that then obviously i need another little polka dot just on this end bit here so i'm going to add that like so and so on okay until you're completely happy with this so if you wanted to make your stripe it's really impossible actually to do perfect stripes when you're wet felting but you know you can get them fairly straight you can see uh my attempt here that's how straight that but i kind of like that i kind of like that kind of wiggly woggliness uh so you can add bits in i think the, th the key thing is to make sure it's nice and opaque you know and you can add bits on and, until you've got some nice straight even lines and if you want to what you can do if you go back to me a sec chris manual uh vision mixing <laughs> what you can do is you can wet it down as you go if you want to as you're building up your design so you may want to just put the red stripes down first then wet it down then add the other bits then add the stripes at the top and do it that way because wetting it down shows you what it will actually look like and whilst I absolutely love how it looks when it's the dry wool tops, you kind of need to see how it looks when it's wet. So, so really, that's that's what you need to do, and and just make sure that you're happy with that before you start rubbing it together. So, if you go back to the overhead again, please, Chris. Once yes, you're master. happy that you've got all of this as you want it, pretend that I have. Obviously, I haven't. I'm not going to spend time on that now today but you would then put the net back over the top you would re-wet it down sorry i have completely run out of uh, solution 
but just if you need to, you would add a little bit more of this to it. You would make sure that you've then got your soap over the top. And it's really important to have this now really nice and soapy. Oh, there we go. I think I have got enough water on there just. Um, and it's really important to keep that soap level up whilst you're rubbing this design together now. So again, you've probably got a, um, a window of about five minutes that you can go back and you can readjust things. So you can see this bit here. Just going to readjust this bit here. So if you started to rub it, you're probably going to rub this now for about half an hour or so until all of the fibres are completely bonded together. Okay, But you've got this period of about five minutes where you can keep peeling this back and keep readjusting what you've done. So if you're finding things are still moving slightly, then you can keep going back to them until you're happy. So maybe you just do that as well. Obviously, I haven't finished this properly, so I'm just kind of outlining what you would do. And then you're going to rub this for about half an hour. Then if you come back to me a sec, Chris, please. And after half an, half an hour, you need to remove the netting, rub across it really briskly to check that none of the designs are moving. So obviously, this is a finished one here. But you really need, when I say rub briskly, you need to not, not be worrying that it's going to wiggle around and... Um, uh, I'm going to use the word wiggly woggly again, but you need to check that it's not going to wiggle around too much and it's it's firmly stuck together because the next step is going to the sink and rinsing it. So you can imagine if you've not rubbed it together sufficiently, it is all, it's not going to go down the, the plug hole, but it's going to become loose and it's going to maybe slightly ruin what your, all your hard work so far. So I find this is the other really important thing that the other important information that I try to impart when people are here on workshops is that you must rub it for long enough. And if you try and skip this bit and move on too quickly to the rinsing and the rolling, then you do jeopardise what you've done so far. So it's really important to do uh, the rubbing. Can you rub it too much? No, you can't, unfortunately. So it's worth just spending an extra bit of time making sure that when you do rub it without the net, none of the fibers are moving they're all completely fixed and then once you've got to that point then you can just move on i'm just going to briefly run you through the other side of this now okay um i'm going to pick it up obviously i, don't I haven't know what you mean by i threw the other side of this now <laughs> that's my watch Who i don't even him? know how that happened i was thinking who's that uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to very carefully, if you go to the overhead, pick this up. I haven't rubbed this sufficiently. Obviously, you would have. I'm going to very carefully pick this up and turn it over. I'm just going to talk you through the, the back. So this is the outside of this now. So this final side has no overlap. That's the most important thing to mention. Now, the next thing, the next important thing to mention is that you're bringing all of these sides in. And what's useful and handy here is that you've got these overlaps showing you how you can match this up from the other side. So obviously when you're bringing these horizontal stripes over here and then you're bringing the vertical red stripes over here and so on. So what I want to show you is how you're going to match this up. So when you bring it round, you're, you're making sure that where you brought these round on this side, you're going to continue the red line up here. And where you bring these round here, you're going to t continue these across here so that it's relatively seamless. Um, what you need to do first is you need to fill in with your white on this final side. So you'll still be doing your white going this way, just in the middle, no overlapping is required on this side, remember, okay? And then once you've done that panel in the middle, then you can continue up with your stripes, okay? pulling them off, as I mentioned, nice and wispily, and making sure that where you've brought this in, sorry, I haven't got enough soapy water, but where you've brought this in is nicely wet down and pushed in. Actually, I probably can do it. Make sure it's not got too many wrinkles all in one place, and keep your shape. It's this shape that's important, okay? So keeping this really nice and tight at the edges is so important. Bring that over, put your white on, then put your, all your colours on this side that match up with the other side. If necessary, like I mentioned before, you may need to just add a cut there just to get that to come round perfectly. Maybe bring that in first. It's a bit dry at the top there. 
bring that in first before you bring this round and then you can see how you can continue these different elements going across to make it all completely seamless on this side as well then what you would do is if you come back to me a sec Chris please yes master then what you would do is you would then cover that wet that down soak that up and rub that for another 30 minutes on that side so, so quite a lot of rubbing involved have you got a question? Zoe Zoe that's a good segue there Gillian lovely uh, love Zoe things. Lewis on uh, Facebook says uh, when we rub for half an hour on mm -hmm. first side mm -hmm. should we not rub overhang too much no, absolutely. Good point. Well made there. Thank That's you. That's what I thought. Good question, Zoe. Good, <laughs> Good question. question. I'm just wondering what that was. It's a tassel. Um, yes, don't rub the edges. You're only When you're rubbing each time, you're only rubbing the main body of the hot water bottle. If you rub the edges, they'll be rubbed too much when you bring them round and won't attach properly to the next side. So well, well, well asked, because I missed that out. Thank you. Bad. Um, bad. So um, make sure that you do rub enough, but only rub the, the main body of the hot water bottle, not the edges. When you bring those round, they then get incorporated into the final side, and that's when they get rubbed with the final bit that you rub that you're putting on the top. Was that the only question? Currently, yes. Okay. So that's the so the other side gets rubbed for thirty minutes as well. Okay. And then the whole thing should feel really robust, okay? <laughs> it's really difficult for me to do this without having like 10 different ones in different stages already made, um, and I didn't have time to do that. But you need to get to the point where you're confident, you feel confident about rinsing it under the tap, okay? Um, if you're feeling like it's still feeling a little bit delicate, the chances are it probably needs rubbing some more, okay? and you really can't rub it too much so make sure it does feel really robust then you're going to go to the sink you're going to give it its first rinse under lukewarm water where you get most of the soap out but you don't need to get it all out and then you're going to come back and you're going to do your first roll now i i don't have a situation where i can show you that with a finished version of this but what I can do is just demonstrate how to roll something. So I'm just going to turn my mat round. This is the mat that you'll have in the kit. If you do have, if you do own a large Bambi mat like this, this is our large one that we sell. This is invaluable for doing larger things. This, this hot water bottle project just about fits in the mini mat in your kit. But if you've got a larger one, you might find it easier. Okay. But what you're going to do when you do do the rolling, obviously ignore the state that mine is in at the moment. I'm just going to show you how to roll it up. And I'm just going to show you the best way to roll something. So if you just go to the overhead, I'm going to turn it over actually, because I think let's just show you that way. Okay. So when you're rolling, um, uh, something up in order to, uh, to to do a roll you do need to make sure that it's rolled up really really tightly in this bamboo so if you roll it up really really sloppily it would be much much harder to do you will end up with bits poking out but don't worry they will get incorporated as you turn it because you're going to keep turning it but what I want to show you is the action of rolling it which should be really really tight and then place your hands over the top and you're rolling it underneath backwards and forwards and the idea is here is these bamboo slats are pushing against the wool and are starting to, to sort of full it is the um, official word fulling and then that is causing it to felt and become harder and thicker and a felted fabric and what's interesting obviously I haven't rubbed this so it's not really going to work properly but what's interesting if you go back to the other shot Chris is that as it starts to felt uh, it uh, and shrink it will shrink in the direction that you're rolling it in so therefore you have to keep turning it because you'll notice this will start to get shorter that way because you're rolling it this way okay so what we do is we constantly turn so when I say do a full roll I mean that you are turning it 90 degrees and in some cases you may just need to fold the end in okay in order to get it all completely rolled and again you are rolling it up as tightly as you can so you're going to be quite rough with it when you're rinsing it and rolling it which is why it needs to be rubbed so so well and then again another 20 rolls backwards and forwards obviously mine's still full of soap so when you're rolling it just make sure 
and you're constantly turning it. So then you'd turn it that way and then you'd roll it up again like this and you'd roll it back and forwards another 20 times and then you'd do it finally this way and then you do another 20 times this way. So by doing that, you're, all, you're getting a constant, um, a more even shrinkage. So as it shrinks, it shrinks evenly that way and that way. And then what you need to do is make sure that you can see the difference in size, the before shrinkage and the after shrinkage. Maybe Instagrammers can't. So the before and the after, okay? So what you need to keep doing as you're rolling it is keep checking it against your hot water bottle that needs to fit inside this and make sure you don't shrink it too much. You're gonna do your first lot of rolling and then you're going to cut the top open and you're going to take the template out so that you're left with what was around it, okay? And then you're going to do some further rolling where you make sure you get all of the soap out and you continue to rinse and roll it until it's the right size to fit your hot water bottle okay um so obviously i haven't got time to show you all that now but that's roughly what if you if you come back to me a sec chris if you uh want to know more about how to do that bit with the rinsing and the rolling i have got other youtube videos on on youtube that will show you how to do that a bit more there's one that shows you how to make 3d shapes it's an original one it's not a live one but it does show you in more detail about how to do that so if you get stuck look at that and then finally, I was desperately trying to get this hot water bottle out. Oh, sorry, another question. Yes, ahead, it might be a bit early yet, but Jojo Wareham on uh, Facebook says, yeah. how do you get the hot water well, bottle in? Well, I'm just about in. to say, okay. So I tried to get this one out so that I could show you how to get it back in, but I was struggling and I just thought, oh, I'm going to end up causing a catastrophe of some sort. So I didn't pursue it. What you do is you roll the hot water bottle up, okay? So roll it up from the side. So obviously, like you've got it almost, I know I've got the cover around it, but sort of roll it up like this. So it's in a, like a cylindrical tube and then insert it through the middle. And then you just kind of fiddle faddle, another technical expression, you fiddle faddle about <laughs> with it until it, it sort of gets flat and it sits inside. And actually mine's probably got about half a centre to a, half a centimetre to a centimetre or well at the sides where there's a bit of a gap but it's a pretty good fit I think the key thing to remember is that you don't shrink this too much for your hot water bottle when you're doing that whole rinsing and rolling bit so I would urge you to keep checking it now if you find that your cover is shrinking too much and too fast then leave out the hot water okay Hot water uh, will always make it shrink more and make it shrink more quickly. So if you're finding that's happening, stick to lukewarm. You don't want any extremes of temperature. Just keep it like, you know, just warm to the hand, just lukewarm um, or just off cold kind of thing. And that will shrink it more slowly and you'll have more control over it. So you still want it to felt properly so that it's hardy and it's tough and it will withstand lots of wear and tear. But you don't want to actually make it too much more, too much smaller. And then, yes, roll up your hot water bottle, put it in the middle and hey presto. Um, and then the world's your oyster. You can reuse your template. OK, when what ha what tends to happen is that when you take it out, in, in the middle of the felting process, it will be a bit kind of beaten and battered because your hot water bottle cover will have started to shrink with it still inside and it will have kind of pulled it away, uh, down a bit. So what I tend to do is just iron them with a tea towel over the top. Not Don't put the iron directly on the plastic for obvious reasons. Tea towel over the top, low iron, iron it flat again and then you can reuse it and you can make subsequent hot water bottles forevermore. Okay, any more questions? How are we doing for time? No, but I would just like to point out that you need to get your finger out because you've got 10 minutes Okay, out. all right. So very, very, very excitingly, next week, um, it has been deemed that I shall be doing my Mexican nichos um, sardine tin felt, uh, not felt, live tutorial. Okay, so... Ta -da! Actually, do you want to go to the overhead and I'll show everybody all the gloriousness of this? So, I've got a number of these to show you. Let's start off with this one. So, 
This is a sardine tin, okay. I'm gonna go. Uh, yes, yeah, yeah, so oh, look, you've absolutely. been dying to do that, yeah. haven't you? Here is uh, my felted sardine. There is a brand new kit now available on our website. Um, we'll be dispatching these from Wednesday onwards, first class, UK post, um, to make a shoal of sardines, okay. So that's uh, the actual felt sardine. So this is needle felted. I'll be running through this briefly next week. I'll be talking to you about how to make this kind of thing from a sardine tin. So the top of the sardine tin is what's been used to make, here's one I prepared earlier. Hang on, let's get some bits. So these bits were the top of it, okay, and have been cut off. Then the inside's been painted, okay. Then I've added some pom-pom trim. So if you want to do this exact same one, you're gonna need some pom-pom trim. You'll also need a selection of the beads that we sell. We sell pearly beads, wooden beads, selections of beads, okay. You will also need, what else? Oh yes, the other cool thing about this is you use the ring pull from the sardine tin to hang it on the wall. Oh, mine's come off. Not impressive, Gillian. Here's another one I made. Now this, go to the close up again, Chris. Oui. This is Chris. I made uh, this for Chris for his birthday a couple of years ago. And I've used the top as his duvet cover because he's in bed, he's having breakfast in bed. So we've got needle felted Chris. We've got needle felted breakfast. I've made a knife and a fork. This is a cup of coffee made from the top of a, like a tube top. Okay, and then I've used the top to make these signs and also his bed cover, all right? But underneath, yes. So we do have some of these. Um, I've got a couple of happy birthday ones. I've got, I think, one that plays the Blue Danube and I think there's a Jingle Bells. Anyway, so if you wanted to do that kind of thing, you could do. You're gonna need some needle felting supplies, needle felting walls. You're gonna need a bit of acrylic paint, some varnish. You're gonna need the sardine tin. You're gonna to need to get eating your sardines. And I just wanted to show you how I, I've used a lot of glitter glue here, um, how I've used the ring pull as the hanger on the wall, okay. And then next, and most importantly, it is nearly Valentine's Day. And some of you were asking me for Valentine's Day projects. So this is another option. So this I made for Chris, um, again, a few years ago now, for Valentine's Day. And what this symbolizes is him and me. So this is him with his gadgetry and his televisions and his cables and his wires and his batteries. Look, he's got a little battery on him. And then this is me with all my textiles and my glitter and my pearls and my beads and my Mexican heart and my tassels on this side and then I've used the lid here so again this is just a normal sardine tin okay but I've oh look it's got a little thing on the back to Chris Love Jilly 14th of the to of the second 2018 so three years ago so I've used the the top of this to make the wings okay that, are, uh, that I've painted either side and also this little bit at the top that says true love so next week I'm going to be showing you guys how to do all of this all you need is a tin of sardines, um, then a few more bits and bobs. I've got some other bits coming next week actually, but if you want trimmings, if you want beads, if you want ribbons, if you want little musical thingamajiggies, those are all on our website. And then needle felting supplies, if you want the needle felting kit that we sell as an option, these are the beads we sell, lots of bits and bobs, glue, You'll need some paint as well. You will need to eat some sardines. One glue? Of my, um, Sorry, did I hear glue? Well, do you know what? I, I, I'm actually, I've got some glue guns coming with some oh. glitter glue sticks. Oh. As I don't think this is a job for Gemtac. Gemtac for all your sticky needs. He's been dying to say that for so long. Um, one of my dear customers very, very sweetly and kindly sent me the sardines. I don't know if you can see them very well. Very cool tin that um, I'm going to be using. I've no idea what the sardines. In fact, another one of my customers is vegan and has actually been and bought sardines for this very project and has been waiting for me to do this. Hello, Kirsty, if you're watching. I don't know what you're gonna do with the sardines if you're vegan, but you know, maybe give them to a neighbor. 
Oh no, you can't do that at the moment, can you? So she says, you actually probably can't do that. Maybe leave them outside. No, maybe throw them away. Anyway, you need the tin. <laughs> the tin is the important bit. Send, and actually, send them to me. I'll have them. And actually, well, no, you don't, don't want them out the tin. Don't, don't no, send no, no, them to me. Can't. That's a bad idea. No. Sorry. Um, not at the moment. So what's important here is is the tin. But actually, it doesn't matter whether it's a beautiful tin or not. It can just be a common or garden tin of sardines from Sainsbury's it doesn't matter because you don't really see the back of it and you actually just want the top um for you know your arty bits and pieces that you're going to cut out so sharp scissors glue paint beads all of that kind of thing so I'm really excited to do this so if you want to make it valentine's themed that's a nice idea I think um so there that's what we'll be doing isn't it Chris next Sunday 11 a.m don't oh, really? miss it. 11 a.m. Sunday. Yes. Oh. I, I thought you. <laughs> I thought I got that wrong then. 11 oh. a.m. Yeah, not p.m. Definitely not p.m. That would what, be What on worse. a Sunday morning? <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Anyway, Can't look, we'll wait. see you then. Um, and if you want to do the sardine one, the sardine kit we are dispatching this week, that's a new felting kit, a new needle felting kit from us. Make a shoal of sardines. It's called Queen Sardine. Okay, all right, I'm going now. No, you're not. Got a question. Oh, I'm not going now because I've Esther got a Esther Willis from uh, Facebook says, off subject, but love the embroidered felt hearts behind you. Is there a kit? No, but there is, um, there is a, a tutorial. So I did this tutorial a few months ago. And actually, where are they? I said I'd do a kit and I haven't got round to it yet. But what you need is you need our felt bundle that we sell. And then you need some some simple double knit yarns. You could use the style craft yarns that we sell, which are double knit. If you get yourself a selection of those two things, well, two things, you'd need a selection of the yarns, get some different colors that you like, maybe, I don't know, they're only like 195 each. Get yourself four or five balls of yarn, get yourself a pack of um, the bundle of felt um, and some yarn darners or some chenille needles watch my tutorial and hey presto you'll be you'll be making those let me just quick one down they are rather splendid i must say um and i show you how to do that on my tutorial yeah i'd quite like to put a kit together i say i don't know what colors to do though because there's so many gorgeous colors maybe i should do a kit with all the colors anyway so yes that's a tutorial if you look it up on youtube you can watch that any more for any more um there was a comment about asking if that was an ear candle in the <laughs> bath thing uh <laughs> that uh, yeah no it's a birthday candle because it was i his think birthday. it's sticking out of my ear um well the the candle holder is next to his ear admittedly but um it was lit when i pre presented it to him so when i gave it to him i was playing the tune and the candle was lit Yes, you did. Very nice, thank you. Okay, I think it's time for us to depart. We will see you next Sunday. Take care, have a great week everybody. Keep your peckers up and we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching, bye. It's